And if you want to start working these patients up, how, what, what are the first tests that you do? Well, so um, um, it depends on the test that you have available to you, obviously. Okay. And so if you think that someone <clears throat> qualifies for CDF because they have enough diarrhea, at least uh, three um, loose stool bowel movements a day, um, and they don't have any other explanation for the diarrhea, um, it, it, dep it depends on, the, on your lab. Some lab, there are two types of testing methodologies that are being used. Most uh, labs now use uh, uh, the PCR-based uh, testing. Um, some uh, labs still recommend a two-step testing uh, with um, uh, uh, glutamate dehydrogenase and toxin testing first, and uh, PCR is a second These are step. stool tests? These are all stool tests. Nobody's getting blood tests. So there are no blood tests for Cidifacil. These are all stool tests, and, um, and, <clears throat> and there are two methodologies to do the stool test. All right, so we have tests that detect free toxin genes, right? And we have tests that target the toxins themselves, not the genes, or detect the presence of strains with the potential to produce toxins. Can you kind of sort that out for me? Uh, so the, the two major divisions of the test modalities are detection of the organism, uh, which is focused most in U.S. hospitals. About 80% of them are using a PCR test modality. We call it NAT, nucleic acid amplification testing and it is detecting the toxin genes, sometimes misreported as detecting the toxin. It isn't actually detecting toxin. It's only detecting the DNA uh, of the toxin They're genes. They're engaged to be engaged. That's it, that's <laughs> it. And the other uh, aspect of testing actually tests the presence of the toxin itself in the, in the stool, and this is thought to be the more specific test. And, it, and there's a great debate going on right now about whether PCR or NAT testing is too sensitive, picking up the organism in patients who might just be colonized but say have diarrhea because somebody gave them a laxative or mm -hmm. they went on tube feedings or whatever it happens to be. I mean, it's, so, it's almost guilt by association. If you have diarrhea and you find the organism, the temptation is to say, whoa, well, C. diff. You know, the, and you're telling me, yeah, maybe not. I've never seen a house staff member who could resist uh, a positive test. <laughs> well, well you, send, you send a test and you right. get the test result and then you say, well, despite of the fact that they suspected it and sent the test and the test is positive, now I'm not going to treat. And so the tricky thing is, and the most important thing is to decide who to test. Because once you send the test, even if the patient may be colonized, it's very hard to resist yes. therapy. And so it's really critical to decide who to test, which is going back to our right. previous it discussion. It goes back to what you were saying. In other words, if you've been giving somebody lactulose and has diarrhea, don't send the C. diff test, if I hear you correctly, until you've stopped the driver and see what happens. Now, supposing somebody's on lactulose with a white count of 50,000 and has diarrhea, that's a different story. Right, that comes back to what, what do you, or, or more importantly, what does the patient have to lose? So if they're on laxulose or a laxative and they're having 12, 15 bowel movements a day and their white count's 50, you, you probably should test for C. diff, maybe even start empiric therapy while you're waiting for the test to come back rather than just stop the laxulose and see how they do because okay. they have a lot to lose.